Luring a Lady. Don't let the title fool you. Luring a Lady is nothing new. You have the headstrong woman who has either never experienced love before or who has never been this much in love. You have the guy who can be very abrasive and assholeish, but actually has a heart of gold or deep down just wants to find love. It hits all the steps you would expect from a novel by the great romance duchess herself, Nora Roberts. Despite this, believe me when I say it, that I have finally found it. I have found the best Nora Roberts novel. This book is awesome. Everything about it, save for maybe one small grievance, is just chock full of witty dialogue, sarcastic, and possibly sardonic humor. Two characters that you actually give a shit about, a real believable romance and believable drama, and it's an all-around fun read. So Sydney, our main chick, inherits her grandfather's company. She was raised as a rich, pampered girl. Now, the women in her family don't actually do anything for themselves. They're raised to be married off. For instance, her mother, who's been married multiple times, can't do shit for herself. I'd be surprised if this woman could wipe her own ass. So everyone in Sydney's family, her mother and this guy her mother wants her to marry, are all like, oh, just let the men do it. Why soil your fingers with work? I'm usually not a huge fan of the whole in-your-face feminism. I've always been the type of person that's like, okay, if you want to show equality, then just have the woman do what the man's doing. That's how I've always been. Because frankly, the whole like, I'm a strong woman, it just lacks tact. And it feels very forced. But I will let it go for two reasons for this book. One, it's actually very charming and funny how Roberts approaches it. And two, this book was written 28 years ago. 27, actually. It was written in 1991. Then we have Mikhail. Mikhail is a Ukrainian immigrant. He's a sculptor and a handyman, and starts putting the squeeze on Sydney and her company to fix a lot of the issues in his apartment building because Sydney's company owns the building, and everyone there is living in squalor. They start out hating each other, find common ground, and then fall in love. Again, this book is nothing new, but Roberts is so charming and the characters are so witty with their dialogue that it's really hard to really hate it. Even the premise is overused, you know, rich girl falls in love with poor boy and her family doesn't approve. But again, it's just so charming and that's the best way I can explain this book. It's just so charming, so witty and I absolutely love the way it's written. And I do want to go into detail with what I love about this book. I love the relationship between Sydney and her mother. There's actually an entire subplot with it. There's a few subplots in this book. Sydney's mom tries to sabotage uh, Sydney and Mikhail's relationship, and Sydney basically tells her to fuck off. Their relationship between the, the relationship between her and her mother is left on a cliffhanger. Sydney expresses that she wants to love her mom and be near her, but as long as her mom's acting like a useless spoiled dipshit, it won't happen. Their relationship is damaged, and that's how the subplot ends. There's no makeup, there's no deep discussion, that's it. You as a reader are left to wonder if they will ever love each other as a daughter and mother should, and I really like how Roberts does that. I like how she faces that idea that sometimes parent-child relationships aren't perfect, and sometimes they're never repaired. I also love the two love interests, Sydney and Mikhail. They can be abrasive, but there are reasons behind it. They're not just assholes for the sake of being assholes. Sydney has to prove herself to her grandfather's company, and Mikhail doesn't like the fact that the tenants in his apartment building are left to fend for themselves. They aren't just dicks because they're dicks, which I have seen in other Roberts novels. They're believable, but they're also really funny, and some of the dialogue they bounce off of each other, especially when they're fighting, is pretty funny too. The final thing that I love is Sydney and Philip's relationship. Philip is Sydney's first husband, and despite growing up together, they weren't meant to be as lovers. And that happens a lot. You can have someone that you're really close to as a friend, but it just doesn't work out when you try to be partners. Their divorce was messy, and she spends a good chunk of the book feeling bad about how things turned out. Eventually, the two meet up again, and they have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and they actually become friends. And I absolutely love how this is done. 
It's very mature, this idea that you don't have to hate your ex after a divorce. It's handled well, so well in fact that I actually have more respect for Roberts because of how she wrote it. Now there is something about this novel that I don't like. Small thing, but I wasn't a fan of it. There's this subplot with Sydney's executive assistant Lloyd, who basically wants her job. He's a sexist asshole who's always trying to undermine her. He makes her company look bad in front of the press, he embarrasses her in front of the committee, he's just an all-around dickhead. Eventually, he pays some guys to vandalize her apartment building and ends up getting arrested, and that's the end for him. This disappointed me. This guy is one of those sophisticated villains, so to see him reduce himself to petty crime kind of put me off. I would have loved to see Sydney put him down, like ruin him herself, instead of having him turn into a vandal. It's the only thing about the book I didn't like. Everything else is pretty damn good. So, how do I rate this? I thought of just an A, because, you know, the minor grievance with Lloyd. But because I found it to be funnier, more mature and wittier than The Last Honest Woman, which was up to this point my favorite Nora Roberts novel, I'm gonna go ahead and give Luring a Lady an A+. This is a damn good romance. If you love romance, or if you love books, or if you are a writer of any kind, especially a romance writer, you need to read this. This is Robert's best work I've read so far in the romance department. She does write other genres, but this is her best when it comes to romance. I do have another review coming. I don't know why I say that. I always have more reviews coming. Hopefully, I can finally get to The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I've put this thing off three times now because I wanted to review Silent Night, Deadly Night, Mistletoe Madness, and Luring a Lady, but I will get to it. I also have another book coming called The Haven, which was surprisingly good as well. I was very surprised at how good it was. So um, stay tuned, you guys. I'll see you later.